You know, they call them dulls, um, but the thing is, they're anything but. Now, let me tell you, I haven't done a, a, a dull in four or five days. Um, <laughs> I don't think today is going to be the day where we get um, a, a super fast tradle, okay? Because the total export is $13.4 million, which is really small. Like, that's basically... Um, in the Wallace and Fatuna level. And I'm saying Wallace and Fatuna because I know statistically in like a few hundred days, if we just keep it around in the head, it may come back, okay? Here's what I'm seeing. Calcium phosphates, electrical transformers, gas and liquid flow measuring instruments, phosphatic fertilizers. These sound like all of like the bands that Chib loves. Here's what I'm thinking, okay? I, I see knit sweaters. It's probably not fair. I see knit sweaters. I think of South America. And then I have to go a very small place in South America. So I go, oh, but wait, this was actually an answer last week. So it's unlikely to be the answer this week. Um, could, it, it, I got to imagine it can't be Suriname. Because if they're exporting toilet paper, they must have some forestry. So then if I, I mean, this is, I, I bounce, it's either like a Pacific Island or like um, somewhere in Central Asia, maybe, because that's where I, I consider like a lot of, of mineral mining takes place. I guess all mining is mineral, but you know what I mean. Um, like non-gold, I guess, like organic, it's calcium is not organic. I'm digging myself a hole, ironically, given that we're talking about the mining industry, I guess. So you know what I mean? Like uh, when the Borat... Kazakhstan National Anthem, all other exporters of potassium are inferior. Um, but 13.4 million is so small. And Central Asian countries are like, they're big. They're really big. I mean, I get that land doesn't vote, but at the same time, you know, there's probably more than 13.4 million dollars of calcium phosphates in Mongolia. So... I, I honestly have no idea how to start. I think I may just start in the stands again and just maybe at least get a directionality here. Um, so give me uh, Tajikistan. I can't remember. Was it was a Turkmenistan that was uh, one of the answers last week. 7,000 kilometers southeast of Tajikistan. Um, let's say it's more east than southeast, 7,000 kilometers. What about like uh, Bhutan? 4,500 kilometers away from Bhutan. Um, could this be a Southeast Asian island off the coast of like Vietnam? <laughs> it's just, I'm like, but I don't know which one of them count as principalities and which one of them are just grandfathered under the umbrella of their mother country. Because like some of these are independently administered territories and some of them are, are like, you know, crown colonies like Canada. Okay, I, I, I mean, do we go straight back to the Pacific Islands as we always do? Do we start with the Solomon Islands? It's west of the Solomon Islands, somewhere between Bhutan and the Solomon Islands. <laughs> it's, um, it's a hard one to picture in your head. Could it be Madagascar? I don't think so. Wait, Madagascar is definitely west of Bhutan. Probably. I feel like this can't work on like on my brain right now is there even anything that's basically why well, listen i don't know <laughs> bhutan it's like north of india solomon island so i have to close my eyes to visualize things i'm, I'm picturing an, a three-dimensional apple spinning in my head right now the solomon islands must be like relatively east of new zealand I'm triangulating the position. I, this sounds crazy. Just at least give me a Vietnam. I, it's not going to be right, but at least maybe we can get some positioning. It's south of Vietnam. It's 
Saipan. Saint Pierre and Miquelon? Isn't that like, um, isn't that the French territory off the coast of New Zealand? I mean, Newfoundland? Um, these all seem Caribbean to me. I, I think this is going to be something I've never heard of in my life before. Um, I, I can't believe, I'm just going to type C and then look for some stuff that makes sense. How about H? How about the Netherlands Antilles? Mm, it's about 19,000 kilometers away uh, to the east <laughs> from Netherlands Antilles. Um, how about a, a B? How about a R? How about a P? How about a J? Mm, Fiji? No, they got to export like... I know this sounds stupid, but it's right, right? Even just the water must be like so much more than that. How about an F? How about a V? How about a X? How about Christmas Island? <laughs> no way. All right. That's Tradle, baby. All skill, skill, skill. I don't even know where Christmas Island is. Plus, you really give me Christmas Island on Easter Tuesday? I don't even know how an ex gave us Christmas Island as well, but that's, that's a miracle. I, I needed that today. Oh, it's south of Vietnam. Of course, about 2,000 kilometers south of Vietnam. Okay, Globla. I'll tell you. I am not going to do... Oh, for Xmas! For Xmas! I am not going to do um, the Christmas Island start. Ah, uh, why not? It's, it's not going to give us much, though. Christmas Island? I mean, this shit's going to be like, did you mean Australia? What do you mean the Marshall Islands? So I can't even... Okay, so it's 17,000 kilometers away from the Marshall Islands. It's, I, I know nothing about here to, I would say, around here. Like, this is New Zealand. This is Tasmania and Australia and Papua New Guinea and Indonesia. This is Hawaii. Which one of these fuckers is Guam? There's like Guam, Marshall Islands, Wallace and Futuna, American Samoa, Christmas Island, um, Saipan, Bora Bora. I don't, I have no idea. Anyway, take the uh, U.S. Virgin Islands. Take me to Algeria. 1,400 kilometers away. Algeria is a goaded starting guess, man. Like, this is the midpoint of the world right here. I'm going to say that it's, take me to Egypt, please. Mm, further away. Okay, take me to Cote d'Ivoire. Who is adjacent? Take me to Togo. <sighs> Senegal. <Ooh. laughs> Every time. Um, Mali. Mali's landlocked, though. Remember that. Oh. <laughs> um, Morocco. Nope. Oh. Liberia. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. Burkina Faso. Nope. Uh, did I do Senegal? I definitely did Senegal, right? Yep. Um, so this is Nigeria. Are you Ghana? Nope. Okay. Uh, never mind. Maybe you're Nigeria. You know what? I feel like Austin Powers trying to unstick the... The Dr. Evil, Evil Corp uh, passenger carrier right now. Like, I just, I keep correcting in the wrong direction. What are you? Are you Equatorial Guinea? Yes. Ek Guinea? Did you mean Ek Equatorial Guinea? 
Can you help me out here? <laughs> can I can I have some help? Guinea? The mystery country is Guinea. Okay. There's did you mean Ek? Okay, today's guess is 13. We got there though. What's what's Guinea Bissau? The Life Aquatic, Aquatic featuring Guinea Bissau. Okay, we're on Worldle. That's just next to Guinea? <laughs> this is... It's a TurboTax ad. I feel like I, I may know you, but... Maybe not. To me, this looks... It looks like it could be Asian. It looks like it could be European. Can I get a Laos on this? This just looks Laotian to me. Oh, that brief moment. I thought we were a genius. 3,700 kilometers northwest of Laos. By the way, can I... I'm, I can't look at Czech because they already know the shapes. But can I get some props here? Because I think... You know, I have like a predominantly American audience, around 50% um, of, my, of my viewers are from the United States of America. I feel like just through the ambient, ambient submersion in metric, you're getting an appreciation for like how long a kilometer is, or at least like how long 500 kilometers is. It's not Kyrgyzstan. This is Afghanistan, bro. Oh! Should have gotten it a little faster, but we got that one. Okay, I can feel my brain turning on after 96 hours of potty training. Daniel Tiger. If you have to go potty, stop and go right away. Flush and wash and be on your way. By the way, anyone else here uh, hear this song a lot recently? I am a gummy bear. I am a gummy bear. I am a something, 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 something gummy bear. OMG me. Is my ringtone? Okay, I, I feel like I'm in trouble on this one. Um, this is box office doll. Paramount Pictures, I mostly know because of Canada's Wonderland. It's August 1994. Number two strikes me as Jurassic Park. That's not a Paramount movie, maybe. Um, <laughs> just let me think about it for a second. Um, so you made $188 million in 1994. That's a lot. This is going to be a movie I've heard of. This is also going to be a movie I've heard of. Opening at $15 million? No. Week 2, $15 million? Probably heard of it as well. I don't know what any of these are right off the top, though. Maybe you've never heard of that. Probably have heard of this. Okay, let's start. Give me, give me the actor. Harrison Ford. This is the fugitive, bitch. Fuck. <laughs> it's clear and present danger. Let's go! I know because I, I had um, Adam's Family on VHS as a kid. And it always opened with like, here's some more Paramount movies that have come to uh, home video recently. And I just remember George Takei's voice. Because the... It was such a cheesy commercial that ran before the movie you just purchased. It was him on like the deck of the whatever the ship from. I think it was actually the he was on the deck of the Enterprise for some reason, despite the fact that he's from the original Star Trek. It was like, hi, I'm George Takei. But you may remember me for playing Zulu on Star Trek. And then he would be like, here's some videos that have just come out from Paramount Pictures on home video. Clear and present danger. He's not Zulu? What's his name? I haven't seen any Star Trek, man. Except Star Trek 2009. Zulu! Come on! I thought he would... When I said you people were like, Zulu's wrong. I thought I... I thought he was Spock or something. Okay. Paramount Picture. I'm going to know this. Number two. The actor is Tom Hanks. Oh, um, yeah, I think I've heard of a little movie called Forrest Gump. 
Okay, New Line Cinema. Give me number five, just because it's probably the most noteworthy, just based on box office gross. Arnold Schwarzenegger, 20th Century Fox from 1994. Kindergarten Cop. It's not Kindergarten Cop. Give me Twins. It's going to be Twins or Junior. Junior. Give me the tagline. When he said, I do, he never said what he did. When he said, I do, he never said what he did. There's no way true lies and clear and present danger were at like the same time. Give me a genre. Action thriller. True lies? <laughs> it is true lies. <laughs> How are there two... Aren't these two Jack Ryan movies? How could these two Jack Ryan movies be in theaters within three weeks of each other? No? For my entire life, I have thought that true lies and clear and present danger is a, are both Jack Ryan movies, which is crazy, because I've seen True Lies, like within two years ago, or within the last two years. Just the whole time, I guess it just never dawned on me that like, his name isn't even Jack Ryan. I don't even know what his name is in the movie. His name is Harry. I don't know, it's just like it was a weird blind spot. Like at no point in the movie that I go, why are they calling Jack Ryan Harry? I guess my brain was probably off when I was watching it on TV anyway. Okay, this is New Line Cinema, we might know. We should know it. It probably grossed almost $100 million by the time it left. It's a, a Jim Carrey movie from 1994? It's The Mask, baby. Somebody stop me. Holy cow. This would easily make $400 million at the box office today. Unfortunately, under the mask's influence, Ipkiss also robs a bank, which angers junior crime lord Dorian Tyrell, whose goons get blamed for the heist. This is a great weekend at the multiplex, man. Can you imagine going to the, the movie theater and you have a choice of clear and present danger, Forrest Gump, the mask, true lies, and like whatever the hell this is? No wonder people are going to see the movies. They're, they're, they're going like two times a week back then. Give me actor. Travis Tedford. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Give me a tagline. Mischief loves company. Genre. Romance. Oh, could it be like, um, look, uh, no, no, no. Beethoven. Beethoven's second. <laughs> um, actor two. Kevin Jamal Woods. Is that Theo from um, from the, the Cosby show? Actor, uh, we should just... Mischief loves... We should reveal all hints. When nine-year-old Alfalfa fault... Yo, it's the Little Rascals! I actually saw that in theaters. Yo, dude! Okay, we 56th percentile. That's like an A plus in box office, though. This was, I, I mean, I don't know how good The Little Rascals holds up, but like this movie is, this weekend was fucking crazy. There was something for everybody. There's a, a like a, a well remembered action comedy in True Lies, something for the kids, The Little Rascals, a, a, a broad cross demographic hit, The Mask. Forrest Gump, I, I hate it, but one of the most renowned movies of all time, possibly. And then you got Harrison Ford in Clear and Present Danger. It's got everything, man. I haven't seen a single one of these. I mean, I feel like for The Mask, you kind of had to be there. Like, I'm not sure that The Mask is, like, something you need to watch for the first time in 2023. I don't even remember when I watched it for the first time, but I, I was telling Kate this weekend, I remember the first time I was introduced to The Mask 
my parents took me to the drive-in movie theater. It wasn't in 1955, for the record. <laughs> Pardon me. First movie, Monkey Trouble. Anna Paquin, classic uh, kids movie where like a monkey escapes from like a makeup testing lab or, you know, like a science facility or something like that. And then they get into all sorts of hijinks. They try to capture the monkey, but Anna Paquin like saves the monkey or something like that. I don't really remember the whole thing. But you're, if you've seen one monkey escapes movie, you've seen them all. Second feature was The Mask. My parents were like, just this movie's going to be too scary for you. Just go to sleep in the back. My ass actually did. I was not the kind of kid, by the way, I'm being told it's Thora Birch, not Anna Paquin, my mistake, it's Thora Birch. I, uh, if my parents said, don't watch this movie, it's going to traumatize you, I said, all right, I'm just going to sleep. And I, honestly, I think I would have been five at this moment, like August 12th, 1994. Um, I think it would have traumatized me a little bit when he like tries to pull the mask off and it stretches his whole face and stuff like that. I don't know if it would have traumatized me when he got shot with a bunch of uh, with, with a bunch of Tommy guns and then he spits the bullets back at the henchmen or when he swallows a three sticks of dynamite with a timer uh, silly putty to it and then when it explodes in his stomach he says, that was a spicy meatball! Anyway, also the mask, when he's, I always remember, when he, do you know the classic moment in a Jim Carrey movie where he's like walking to his place of work, but he meets like all these side characters that you're never going to see again, and they're like, hi Stanley, and he goes, hey, uh, how's the wife? Keep working on that golf game. I remember, the, he meets someone, or maybe it's not Jim Carrey, maybe it's the cop, either way, he meets someone, and he's, he says like, hey Tony, you got to stop eating all the deli meats because of the nitrates. Like, that's stuck in my head. That's why I, I'm getting the nitrate-free beef jerky. It's stuck in my damn head. Anyway, Sydney 2 Nurdle. <clears throat> Average today, 4.1. That's not that bad. That one's not in the mask. <clears throat> nitrates... The mask. Nitrates. Liar, liar. Neither of those turned up. Quotes. Nitrates. End quotes. Jim Carrey. Don't eat the gabagool, Grandma. It's nothing but fat and nitrates. R slash circle jerk sopranos. I've got to I've got to get a source on this one, okay? Because <laughs> I don't think it's from the Circle Jerk Sopranos. <laughs> okay, full screen. Cine Two Nerdle. I see Eddie Redmayne. I see motor neuron disease. I see theory. That's the theory of everything. I also see genius, World War II. This is going to be, this is the theory of everything. This is um, the imitation game. Oh, they got a little screenshot now. How about that? Um, I see Best Picture and Mahershala Ali, which is Moonlight, but I've never seen Moonlight. And I see David Fincher... Michael Douglas, this is the game. Um, this is going to be messed up because we need game here. <laughs> Which is a mystery. It's David Fincher, Michael Douglas, game, David Fincher. Now, obviously, that blows this up, but just work with me here. We found an intersection, at least. Best picture... I mean, I, I feel like there's a boy in the striped pajamas here. That's about World War II. And then we got nine swaps left. It must be swap. Well, no, no, no. Swap this. No, 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 because this is genius. Okay. Give me theory, motor neuron disease, Eddie Redmayne. We got them all. I see Moonlight. I see 
imitation game. I see Boy in the Striped Pajamas, Theory of Everything, The Game by David Fincher. We got it all. That was an easy one today. We puzzled it all out. I've seen one of these movies. I've seen The Imitation Game. It's crazy this shit came out in 2014. I watched um, this on an airplane, but it was the last time, I hope it's the last time in my life, it was an airplane with one TV like per section in the cabin, and you just had to look at the TV from wherever your seat was. There was no seat back entertainment. I can't believe, this must have, I think I flew Air Canada Rouge or something like that. It was like a discount flyer. It was like being on a bus. I can't believe that was less than 10 years ago. Movie to movie. The Book of Eli to Secret Agents. Um, this is impossible because I don't know what Secret Agents is. So we're going to have to do it flipped. Um, is, this, is this Monica Bellucci and Sean Penn in between roles? I don't know. Vincent Cassell, Monica Bellucci. So we got, okay, we got to get to Denzel Washington. Step one is you bring yourself to um, America instead of Italy. So we go Vincent Cassell, and then we go whatever Oceans movie he was in. Let's go with 13, because that was like a return to form. And then we've got to find Denzel Washington. Denzel Washington is in, in, in terms of ensemble movies, he's in... Training Day with Ethan Hawke. He's in. Um, let me, I can f fucking get to this one. He's in Flight with John Goodman. George Clooney. Oh, brother, where art thou? John Goodman. Flight. Denzel Washington. The brain is, is cracked today, man. We got there. Not bad. I was also thinking American Gangster. I was like, you got Common... You got Russell Crowe. I don't know who else is in American Gangster. I've seen it a couple times, though. It's a good movie. Not bad. Not bad today. Don Cheadle was also in Flight. My ass catching strays when I, I saw Flight once nine years ago on Netflix. Probably like in bed. You're lucky I remember John Goodman. To remember two actors from each movie is like, do you know how much space that takes up in the brain? Okay, guess the game. Flight is also terrible. Flight is actually good and you're wrong. This is Asteroids. This is Undertale. It's Baba is you, it's Baba is you. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I remember Baba is you. What a it's kinda of, kind of the problem with it was like it's a little too easy. Okay, I was told that hurdle is like not good today. We're gonna try anyway. Okay, this is Quinn Hughes. I can tell you that for certain. He's a defenseman in the West, in the Central. Is Kale McCarr? Mm, it's not Kale McCarr. He plays for not Colorado. He's a young defenseman in the West. I'm just going to be honest. I'm, I'm turning my screen off. I'm on full screening. I'm going into my Wordle folder. I am, I'm opening it. I'm right-clicking on Hurtle. I'm deleting Hurtle. It said too many misses. I'm sorry. Goodbye. It's just too much. I said, like, it's, uh, the first five, I'm, like, racking my brain for who it could be. And I, like, I come down. I know one player who fits all the criteria. It's not them. And then I go, all right, well, fuck, I guess I don't know it. That, that's one that needs some curation. Okay. We've got Gamedle. Gamedle has three in and of itself. 
This is, we'll start up with Guess the Game from the Box Art. I don't know this one immediately. I'm going to say it's Far Cry Primal. It's not even on the list. Oh, yes, it is. It's not right. This, is this Player Unknown's Battlegrounds? No. Actually, you know what this looks like to me? Is um, Just Cause. I mean, could this be a Just Cause 3? I don't know, brother. That kind of looks like Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. <laughs> P sorry, PUBG Battlegrounds. It's a man with a rifle. These are not zombies, I assume. Um, so this is Days Gone. Nope. No, oh, it's a lady with a rifle. What was I thinking? It's, um... This is Homefront. The Battleground. This is Homefront 2. This is Fallout 76. This is The Last of Us. Left Behind. Because I don't recognize the character. Well, that helps. Is this Daisy? I could tell from the font. It is Daisy. There we go. <laughs> it really is Daisy. Also known as Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, by the way. There's also clues below the search. Oh, well, my bad. <laughs> of course, it's a role playing game in the most technical sense. Game, though. This is, guess, the artwork. The artwork. To me, this looks like um, that right there. It looks like a Resident Evil. They're mid sprint in Resident Evil Three. This looks like Mass Effect Andromeda. Skip me. Oh. This looks like Killing Floor 2. Hey! I'm not ashamed to say this. I think I hate every game that is just like you and your friends murder an unending uh, horde of enemies. You know what I think would be a sick inversion of the genre? How about you and your friends go up against one boss who's like hard as fuck? Instead of just like... Yeah, something like Monster Hunter. Actually, Monster Hunter is like the, it's the, the perfect antidote to this for me. I loved Evolve too, but you guys aren't ready for that take. Also, I got an Evolve shirt at a media event in 2014. I have run in it. I've biked in it. I've worn it 200 times. That shit is... It's unkillable. It's got to be the oldest shirt that's still in the damn collection. It, it fits just as well as it did day one. It's not faded or anything. I got to figure out who they, who they printed with. It's crazy. Live longer than the game? Well, it lived longer than like almost any game that came out around that period. Like Evolve only lasted like six months at best. <laughs> but it, it outlasted like some very, very successful games from that period as well. Hmm. 
my friend made me buy Evolve. Good, it's a, it's a good game. But people decided they didn't want it. Oh, it's a lot of work involved, and I'd rather just go. Oh, there's zombies on the right now. Oh, now there's zombies on the left. <clears throat> Stark Souls 2. It's a single player game. Came out on a, a PC or a console. Fantastic. Um,. It's more recent. It's not from Bandai. It's single player, multiplayer, and cooperative. I'm going to assume that it's a PC game. Let me get a Warhammer. Let me get a Vermintide. They don't have it. Let me get a Left 4 Dead. <laughs> Let me get a Killing Floor. Let me get a um, single-player, multiplayer, cooperative. Let me get an Anthem. Nope. Between 2014 and 2019. It's first person. And it's not published by EA. It doesn't, it's not necessarily first person. It's just not third person. <coughs> Could be the rare second person shooter. Or like isometric or something. Um, I, I should not guess Anthem. Because in my head, I just... Um, every time I, I talk about Anthem, I just hear, Don't want to be you. Don't want to be just like you. What I'm saying is, this is the anthem. Throw all your hands up. Tell all your if the tip of you with me. Yeah. Anyone else do a Kendall Tool 30 minute pop punk ride this week? No? Okay. You know what? Actually, we know for a fact it's not a shooter. Maybe it's a strategy game, man. Maybe it's fucking Rimworld. Oh! It was made in Unity, it's isometric. From 2018. And the only... The Matrix Multiplication tells me only... It came out on the PC. The Unity. Isometric. 2018. I could not tell you, my friends. I could not tell you. It's Stardew. Probably that's like 2016, but... Yep. Okay. We're doing Matrix Multiplication. Strategy Simulator or Indie. The engine is XNA. You know what? I didn't know that. I didn't know that. It's Factorio. Nah, that's, that only came out in 2020, dummy. Game engine, no data. It's probably programmed in like C proper, if I had to guess. It's machine code. It's actually just manipulating the, uh, the logic gates directly on the microchip. Let me get a one-time clue, please. Oh, good. We know it's an indie strategy game from 2000. It's Into the Breach. Into the... Uh, no. No. Come on. Come on. Indie strategy game. 2018. It's isometric. It's fucking Planet Zoo. Oh, fuck. It's made in Unity. I'm not getting any closer. That's just, that's the scary part here. Worst part is, I, I guarantee I fucking played this shit, man. 2018, what was I doing in my life? So you right turned 30. What were we playing? What were we playing? We were playing a little Children of Morta. <laughs> playing a little... Uh, I don't know. I'm I I pass. Anybody know this? Among us? I I'd, I'd be surprised, man, but maybe it is Among Us. I wouldn't I guess it is a strategy game. 
That's fine. You got me on that one. Apparently, Among Us, though, is not part of the Among Us saga. Single player. <laughs> Wrong saga. That's a tough one. I mean, maybe it's actually, like, one of the easiest ones. It's one of those things where... You ever see, like, um, oh, 99% of kindergartners can pass this test, but some adults can't? Sometimes knowledge is a burden. Okay, it's Rotten Tomatoes, a two-word history drama from 1995 that's well-loved by the, uh, the critics and the audience alike. This is Rob Roy. Wrong. Captures the wonder... Oh, this is Apollo 13. It's a great movie. The props that Tom Hanks gets for Forrest Gump, he should get for Apollo 13 instead. Much better movie. Okay. Chrono Photo Daily. Or both? Nope. Because um, uh, Forrest Gump is not good. Forrest Gump is good in the same way that like um, Bon Jovi's um, Living on a Prayer is good. It's in the same way that like um, eating like a tablespoon of table sugar like tastes good. It's in the same way that Ruth Conda Forever is a good tweet. Okay. This is um, to let five large rooms. Please leave Bon Jovi alone. I'd love to. People keep like introducing me to him. I'll like, hey, put, put me on shuffle. We start with shuffle. Pavement, cut your hair. Awesome. Track two. Um... Third Eye Blind, Semi-Charmed Kind of Life. Keep it going. Say Sausage, keep it going. Track three, Living on a Prayer, Bon Jovi. No, stop. Track four, Don't Stop Believing, Journey. What did you do? The algorithm got all fucked up. Track, track five, uh, Hotel California by the Eagles. Bring it back, bring it back. Track six, Wanted Dead or Alive. Track seven, Shot Through the Heart and You're to Blame, You Give Love a Bad Name. Fucking track, anyway. Bring me back, bring me back, man. Then it goes, uh, then it gives me some rush, like working man. And I'm like, okay, let's bring me back. Track eight, Kid Rock. Anyway, sorry. Is she holding that or is that like, is there an optical illusion happening here? Are you, oh, it's attached to the wall behind her. <laughs> okay. She's got her, she's got her hand in her pocket and the other one's given a peace sign. I thought she was holding like this lamp with, with psych, uh, psychic powers or something. It does kind of look like Renee Zellweger. This is Bridget Jones Sr. Before the Diary, coming this fall from, from Marvel. <laughs> so, look at that gumball machine, man. Holy cow. I'm going to say this is the 40s. I mean, this sounds glib, but there's like... There's no man in sight. So I'm going to say this is like 1944. Okay, I'll take it. Lelling 2. Thanks for the gifted subscriptions, by the way. Thank you. Just looking at this, to me, this is... This looks like 2008. Just sending it. It's 2005, okay. It's an advertisement. By the way, you know another thing that the For You algorithm has been serving me all the time on Twitter now? Is why can't we go back to this form of air travel? And it's always like um, people sitting in plush leather chairs. And then the, the flight attendant is wheeling like a, a 10 course dinner and carving like prime rib off of a roast. They're like, look at what happened to... Now we're all crammed into fucking little tiny. It's an ad, you moron. It should, there was never a plane people went on, like in economy class, where people were rolling a buffet down the aisles. Are you crazy? 
It never happened. The shit was saw, shot on like a sound stage. No media literacy, man. It's, it's driving me insane. It's literally, if you zoomed out, if you took a picture of the picture being taken, there's like a set cut out on a Hollywood sound stage. People think it's a little aluminum tube in the fucking sky. Like they, they took off to do the ad campaign. Yeah, they were bringing up like whole roasted hams into the air in the MD-80s. Listen, sorry. <laughs> also, like if they sold that shit on a real plane now, your ass couldn't afford it. Like no disrespect. They're never going to be doing that shit in economy. That is, that's like a private plane experience. It would be like a $45,000 plane ticket for four hours. You'd be like, they expect me to pay that? No, bitch, they expect you to go to economy. Sit in your chair and watch two movies, and then guess what? You made it from L.A. to New York. Pack some Cheez-Its or like a, a turkey sandwich or something like that. Watch half a movie, take a cat nap, you're fucking there. Just relax. Your ass does not, you're in the sky for three and a half hours. You don't need a, a 10 course dinner. You know what's crazy about Americans? Listen, I'm going off. You talk to an American that flew from like New York to Chicago, they'll be like, oh, my legs are so fucking sore. How was your flight? Fucking sucked. There was turbulence. Fucking leg. P person in front of me reclined their seat. Oh, it was the worst three hours of my life. You talk to somebody from Texas, and you're like, how was the drive? They're like, oh, it was a breezy 12 hours. No big deal. What the fuck is wrong with you? Does it, you, you your shit's all backwards, man. It doesn't make any damn sense. Okay, anyway. This, this screams the 70s. It's the hair. It's the colors. The fact that TWA doesn't exist anymore. I'm going to say this is 72. We take those. Seems like this is from the Cold War. Relatively modern military garb. Cars that might be from the 60s or the 70s. Certainly this looks very European if I may go GeoGuessr on you here for a moment. I'm going to say this is 1968. 74. Okay, I'll take that. <clears throat> this has the vibe of like um, Rambo First Blood Part 2 where it's like this film is dedicated to the brave Mujahideen fighters of Afghanistan I basically just don't want any part of this photo but it must be from 80 to 88 because that's when Reagan was the president so put me, I don't know. Honestly, he looks pretty ambitious here. I mean, this is a, this is a big meeting. Let's say that's a first term Andy, 1982. I'll take that. 3902 kind of hurts me a little bit because our, our benchmark for getting like an A is 4,000. But this is pretty good. I'm still pleased with that. And then we got one. Oh, no, we got two, right? I didn't put listed.fun in here. Now we have our real estate ones. This is the, the bougie one because it always says presented by um, realtor. Very modern house. Looks like the kind of house that someone would live in you know, on the television show Black Mirror, where everything is dystopian except for the architecture. Obviously, there's a Porsche in the, in the driveway. No neighbors. Tropical climate. We don't see... I'm going to imagine this has beachfront access. I'm going to say this is Hawaii. I'm going to say this is an $11 million house. That's too low. Okay, next clue. It's in Sunny Isles Beach, Florida. See, now I'm kind of losing it. This is in Florida. The house doesn't look that big. Still may have ocean access. But like Hawaii, you can sort of see it, but 
But Florida, now I'm like, I mean, you can ask for it. Will you receive it? I don't know. So we got to go at least 700,000 over our last guess. I'm willing to take you to 13 million. That's too high. We're going to get it. We're, my radar was fucking bang on today. Holy dude. Sure, it's nice. Whatever. We've been going to these open houses in Vancouver too. This shit drives me crazy. I do not want a wine cellar. Like I could just keep like a bottle of wine in my fridge or something like that. I could just keep like a... I, I don't need a special room that holds 200 bottles of wine. I'd rather just have like a bathroom or something like that. That's a part of the reason. I don't want a wine cellar because my ass would, I have poor impulse control. I would just drink the wine. And I don't have an interest in, in collecting wine. I think you're just tempting fate with something like this. Give me a, a closet. I, you could always use another closet or like another you know, pantry or something like that. But I don't, want, I don't want a space for 200 bottles of wine. And you're like, does it do anything else? People are like, well, you could also keep whiskey in it. They see, someone in chat literally on the delay was like, you could also put whiskey in it. That doesn't solve the problem. This is crazy, man. You don't need this. You already got a fridge. Why not just get a wine fridge? I don't want a wine fridge. That's too much wine. You go buy a bottle of wine when you know you're going to have like a nice dinner. Split the bottle of wine. Put it in the recycling bin. You're good to go. You don't need to keep some inventory on hand. They're, they're always making more. Anyway, we know we got to be somewhere in the, in the 12 range here. 11.9. Pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. Couldn't you just use the room for something else? Not really. Like, it's, it's temperature controlled and there's, like, built-in fucking, like, 64 little bottle holders. You could, you, all you could use it for is storing bottles. I guess you could start collecting ships. Ships in bottles. Put your milk in there. Just remove it. Now you got to buy like a $3 million house. You got to pay like another $100,000 to get someone to rip the fucking bottle holders out of the, your wine cellar. Just make it a closet. Then if I wanted a wine cellar, I'll turn it into a wine cellar. Shit is presumptuous, man. Okay, listed dot fun. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe this one's bougie too. You could always turn it into a humidor. I think you're missing the problem, honestly. You're, you're missing the point, I should say. I mean, I don't know. This is like, do do Uncle Owen and Aunt Baru live here? Shit looks like a kind of helmet you wear if you get deployed in the desert. Like, I don't know. Is this like an antenna? I guess it's a chimney. I have no idea. I think you have to be rich to live here, though. Because, like, this is not like something you just go to a contractor and go like, give me a number one. <laughs> this is like, this is like you did this shit yourself in like AutoCAD or something like that. And then they got like, the, it's geodesic, man. I got to assume this is at least like, it depends where it is, but start me at two. We were too high. I think that's what that means. It's in Twin Peaks, California. Take me to 1.4. We're still too high. It's a single family home. Yeah, I noticed. That's not really that helpful. It sold like a week ago. Take me to a milli. 
Three beds, two baths, no walls. Seven hundred thousand. It was built in nineteen seventy-seven. Give me a five hundred thousand. It's fifteen hundred square feet. <coughs> it started a little high. Yeah, dude, someone got a steal on this thing. Does it not have like a, a water and sewer hookup or something? Like, it's under five. Oh no, it's over five hundred thousand dollars. It's in California, in the middle of the woods. They got a damn hot tub out there. Maybe it's a, a campfire or something. Over five, between 500 and 700. Well, you know what? I'm not an idiot. Give me a 600. It's 1.24 acres. I don't know what that means. Give me a 570. Previous previous sales in 2019 for 385. Um, okay, give me a 490 then. I mean, that's a huge appreciation in four years, man. Listing price was 665,000. Give me a 530. Did I get it? Too bad. Try again tomorrow. It's 557. You're right, it was over 500. I went lower. <laughs> you believe that this the audacity of this uh, bitch, as they say on Twitter? The lion, the witch, and the audacity of this bitch? You bought the house three and a half years ago for $385,000. You had the audacity to list it for $665,000. Let it sit on the market for four months and then lost a hundred grand, but still like, I don't know, made like an 80% return on your investment. You wanted to list it for two million? I, I'm not saying that I would have paid two million for this. I am simply saying I thought somebody was stupid enough to pay two million dollars for this. I'm not saying me. People pay a lot of money for stuff that I consider valueless. It's a tent? I mean, it looks pretty nice. I'm not going to go see the listing. That's too far. It's like peeking in through their windows. Like what? <laughs> Shampoo? That's a good answer. Wine cellars? Yeah, wine cellars. That's a big one. Also, home theaters. I'm not talking about like a, a nice TV and a sound system. I'm talking about like a, a room in your basement where you put a huge shitty TV. Just give me the room, man. I'll just I'll, I'll, I'll make it into something else and then I'll just watch like the mask on my phone or something like that. 